Hi, I'm Graham Randall. And I'm Brent Mariner. <laughs> well said, Brent. Thanks, Graham. We're going to tell you... Both? Yes, Brent. Um, both of us are going to tell you Jack Maloney's story. Jack Maloney existed in the central coast of Australia, in New South Wales. He was very gifted at design. He had a ginormous imagination. He could design anything. Ginormous isn't a word, Brent. Logos, buildings, CDs, web pages, theme parks, cars, anything. Can you go on, Graham? I think I've bit my tongue. What? And I only have one page. Have you got mine? No, I'll go on. It's okay. Uh, he, he was actually so good that his school principal assigned him as head architect and interior designer for the new renovation of the school. He spent night after night, passionate and creative, trying to come up with blueprints of the new office rooms and gymnasium. He was promoted a grade in school. His principal gave him an award for his efforts. He continued to get high grades in all subjects. He had too many awards and certificates to know what to do with. But one day, his principal resigned. He was replaced with a principal who was different in every respect. Her name was Mrs. Waters. She didn't support Jack's talents at all. Mrs. Waters was mean and, well, manly. Jack begged his previous principal to come back to the school. However, he told Jack he was too old and tired. He had retired. Oh, I get it. Begging. Poor Jack was devastated. The new principal gave him boring and difficult homework. Jack's grade started to plummet. <coughs> to counter his now monotonous school life, Jack created an imaginary friend he called Mr. Howard, who followed Jack around everywhere and was a big distraction. <laughs> By this time, his grades were very low. Jack's parents became alarmed. They took him to a school counsellor. He sent him to an eminent psychoanalyst, who in turn sent him to the local hospital, who sent him to the St. Thomas the Brave and Vigilant Mental Institution. Graham. There, he met a nicely groomed doctor called Dr. Brain. Contrary to his name, Dr. Brain wasn't intelligent at all, although he liked people to think he was. He had a nice big name badge too. Dr. Brain unsmartly told Jack to ignore the hallucinations and hope for the best. Ja uh. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Graham. How do you turn an elephant into a fox? <laughs> Jack tried his best. One day, Mr. Howard, who was very real in Jack's mind, approached Jack. Mr. Howard wanted him to design brushes for a new campaign he was planning. If he accomplished this successfully, Mr. Howard promised to leave Jack alone. Jack accepted. He stayed up night after night, trying to come up with an idea for the plan. Finally, Jack had a brilliant idea, and he promised himself he would start on the designs the next afternoon. He slept serenely that night, dreaming of Mr. Howard. Oh, gay. <laughs> the next morning at school, something unexpected happened. Jack was kidnapped by Dr. Brain and a group of men in white. They locked Jack up in the psychological institution. Jack knew he wasn't insane and he screamed, but I have the design idea for Mr. Howard. He's real. He's real. 
but they didn't listen to poor Jack. Jack liked to stare at the left corner of his cell, which was adjacent to the back of the infirmary. He liked conversing with a bloke called Graham. He told Graham his story of work. Graham became Jack's best friend, bestest buddies. Well? Well what? How do you turn an elephant into a fox? <sighs> How? Marry her! <laughs> Get it? What? <laughs> How do you turn an elf? No, wait, hold on. How do you- how do you turn a fox into an elephant? Oh, marry her. <laughs> yeah, I get it. But, Brent, dude, I don't think we're allowed to say those kinds of jokes in here. Oh, well, come on, Graham. It's almost time for the nurses to give you your injections and put you to bed. Oh, really, Doc? Yes, yes. Now I've got to go. I'm running late for a Wait. Minute. Hang on, Doc. Oh. What are you gonna do about my friend Jack? <laughs>